main issue behind, behind the work here is to, to point out that, that there, there was a printing industry, a commercial artist industry here in London, which is still struggling to survive due to, to modern digital printing uh, studios being able to produce their work a lot quicker, a lot cheaper and, and, and in larger quantities or smaller quantities. There's a responsibility in acknowledging that people used to do things in a certain way using certain skills and it's very easy for machines and modern technology and modern production techniques to make them completely obsolete very, very quickly. And maybe we should explore how we uh, integrate traditional techniques with modern technology and, and, and try not to forget what what all these um, small localised production units have to offer, especially in places like London. Yeah, I, cre I created these ink dispensers to be quite human and quite lifelike, just because they do represent, well for me they represent the commercial artists busy at work in their studio, repeating their process time and time again and they're all slightly different and slightly quirky, maybe quite shy and quite fragile because, you know, their well, they're, they're industry and what they do is under threat. So I felt the, the, these items also needed to be quite fragile, quite delicate, and that they could potentially die out or um, become exhausted from, from repeating their process over and over again. And in some cases, they have burnt out the motors, uh, the wires become loose, the, the sycamore seed breaks or falls off, or they become clogged up. And I felt that was such a more human and sincere approach to creating a machine, something that had that fragility that could fall apart or could deteriorate with time from doing its job, rather than creating a machine that represents how machines are used in production, how they're able to, to overcome what a human being can do because they're relentless and that they don't tire out. So these are machines with a slight difference. I was particularly fond of the aesthetic of ink splatters. Um, purely because when I used to visit the commercial artist studios in the East End, everything there would be covered in ink. Their, their clothing, their facilities, their, their equipment, the floor, the walls. And, and it was it's quite easy to, to think of that as the residue, the, the, the tritus, the, the unwanted part of a process, not, not necessarily something that they tried to do, but something that came as a consequence of what they were doing, which is beautiful in it, in it is uh, right. It's uh, the ink splattering collected over the years, over their furniture, over their, their, their equipment, and, and what they were wearing. It's very romantic. I, wa I wanted to set up a d um, not, not just a gallery here in Covent Garden, but also a place for me to design, to produce, to manufacture and to distribute and ultimately sell items. So, so since the 10 days I've been here, I've been developing different ideas on how I can use the machines to produce things. And, and to see what I could do with my time here and, and the materials I have, just to uh, create, to just open up to different ideas and different uses of the technique and, and not be afraid to demonstrate that to the people passing by because we're usually as, as, as creatives, we're, we're quite shy and we just wait for the final item to be produced and then we display it to the uh, outside world. But I think it's important to, to make people understand how much effort and how much failure goes into behind a success of an object. 
So it's quite nice that they see that side of the procedure. Well, it's been interesting to see how people react to the project because they look equally confused yet curious and, and I've had to sort of explain the project a few times. They tend to look, to look at the project for as long as they want but they also use the window as some sort of protective barrier so they don't interfere with what I'm doing yet they can uh, show interest in what I'm doing. But I, th I think the reaction's been quite positive. I'm quite pleased that I've um, at least been able to confront consumers and offer them something different or something a bit more real than the glossy shops, the sort of staged um, um, environments that retailers, that's designed to make them spend money or, or feel that this is you know, what life's about. But it's nice to see that they can see um, something that isn't so perfect or isn't so clean or something that's still work in progress and is being made and does require some difficulty.